Well, we have just learned that the poverty rate spiked primarily yep. among children because Republicans forced an end to the child tax credit, which was incredibly successful, reduced child poverty by about a third. So that's what they think about babies. They also don't support parental leave. They also don't support uh, maternal care. They're also busy kicking people off of Medicaid. I could go on and on. They have no regard either for the women or for the babies. But it is refreshing to know that they are no longer talking about pro-life because they are not pro-women's life. They are endangering women's lives. And we've seen that all over the country. We now know that women who are facing serious illness or death are being prevented from accessing abortion. Um, and we know that they are seeking to remove from the shelves a safe abortion medication that has been available not only for treating abortion, but for treating miscarriage for over 20 years. So let's not get confused because they decide that they have a marketing problem. Mm -hmm. I think what you heard from Trump was an absolute word salad. By the way, the person who is incoherent and unable to string together a sentence is not President Biden, it's former President Trump. So people should start listening to his diction and his syntax, which is just unintelligible most of the time. Um, the press, unfortunately, does a very good job of cleaning it up a little bit too much so he sounds more cogent than he really is. But this is a dead bang loser. Every time it's been on the, on the ballot since Dobbs, whether it's a referendum, whether it was the Supreme Court swing, state, swing seat in Wisconsin last April, the abortion forces, the anti-abortion forces, the anti-women forces, the forced birth forces have lost. Democrats are enraged by this, independents and Republican women. When you had that huge victory in Kansas, there are not that many Democrats in the state of Kansas. That was independents, Republicans, and Democrats saying, no, we don't want a bunch of politicians telling us when we can and cannot have medical care. Right, they were saying this is a government overreach at its finest. One of the things I, I loved about your argument, Jennifer, the fact that, that Republicans are underestimating Americans at their own peril is that it actually kind of flips the script, right? Because that is part of what Donald Trump has tried to sell American voters. He has tried to sell this idea that Washington doesn't take them seriously, that Washington doesn't understand their concerns. And so then to actually see the implementation of some of these policies, see people have to live with the policies and not like them. But also to imagine that they're just going to, like, get one over on the American people it's not, it's not even internally consistent with what they have been trying to tell American voters for the past eight years or so. Right, and when you think of their formulas, they say, well, the state should decide. What does that really mean? I mean, state legislatures should be uh, should be deciding this issue. But how are state legislatures formed? They're formed in highly uh, gerrymandered districts where there is not a fair election where politicians pick their voters rather than the other way around, where there is voter suppression, as your last guest just talked about, for example, in Texas. So it's all bait and switch. It's war for popular control, but we're not going to let have the people have access to the ballot or have fair elections to determine their representatives. We think that this is good for women. Oh, well, maybe we shouldn't call it pro-life after all. We should call this pro-baby. And by the way, this is a symptom of virtually every right-wing authoritarian government. They reduce women to the role of baby makers and baby incubators. <laughs>